So hey guys, how's it going and welcome back to the channel. Today is going to be a study with me where we're going to do a few UCAT questions together. The UCAT 2020 will be a very important exam for those of you applying to medicine, both in the UK and in Australia. Getting a very good UCAT score, as always, will make your application far, far easier. Today we're going to focus on the quantitative reasoning section. So I'm going to use Medify's platform, we'll go through some questions together, and I'll speak out what I'm thinking and how I'm working through the different questions. Now remember, the point of this isn't for me to get every single question correct. It's for us to work through and begin practicing. So we've opened up Medify, let's crack on with a few quantitative reasoning questions. Now it's very important for this section that you are good with the calculator. So a veterinary drug, pentinamol, is prescribed four separate conditions, milligrams, okay, per kilogram. What condition requires the greatest grams weight of pentanol for a treatment for a one kilogram hamster? So for this we need to work out the time course one tablet daily for two weeks. So let's just write X, Y, Z, P. One tablet daily for two weeks, that's 14 days. 14 times five is 70. Um, 10 days times two is 20 times six is 120. Three weeks, 21 days, 63 tablets. So 63 times 3.5, roughly 220. Made a silly mistake there, but I don't have time. Six weeks is 42 days. 42 times two is 84 times 2 is 168. So it would be conditions that, yeah, because the time course of the medication is how long it'll take for them to be treated. Jane of the Rottweiler takes 504 milligrams of pentanimol. What condition did she have? So let's first divide 504 by 3, which is 168. If it's 168, you had condition P because condition P, it's six tablets daily for two weeks. We worked out it's 168 grams for that time period. Good work. Um, Sarah, the horse is treated with pentanimal on two separate occasions. One time for condition X, one time for condition Y. What is the percentage increase in drug consumed in two courses of drug treatment? Right. So we can't actually... Actually, that's fair enough because um, per kilogram body weight anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so condition Y is 120 milligrams per course, per kilogram, and condition X is 70. So it'll be 120 minus 70 divided by 70, which is a 71.4% increase. Right, next question. Pentinimal can be used to treat a rare condition R. However, it requires high dosages of 10 milligrams per kilogram. Unsafe to exceed 2,000, treated four times daily for two weeks, great. So um, four times two weeks is 14 days, four times daily is 14 times four, which is 56. So um, 56 times 10 is 560 milligrams, 2,000 divided by 560. So it'd be 3.6, 3.5 kilograms, because it can't be 3.6 because then you're exceeding it. to do three significant figures, 3.57. Great, right, all's correct, good work. Let's do another one. Yeah. Tapers of the University Department. Okay, what percentage, we're gonna just go through that. What percentage increase in postgraduates applying for jobs between 2002 and 2003? Postgraduate 2002, number applied. Um, applying for jobs, okay, great. So, to work out the percentage increase, you have to work out the difference first. So 40 is 60 minus 3140 is 1120 divided by the original number, which is 35.6%, round up to 36. What is the total number of postgraduates applying for jobs in 2002 and 2003? So it's just 3140 plus 4260, 7400. Over two years, what is the number that applied for jobs but failed to be selected for a job? So um, it's a total of 520 plus, oh wait, no, um, this is everybody, right? Great, so we need to add together 415 plus 520 plus 620 plus 640, that's 2195. Then we need to add 
six four fifty plus three one four zero plus seven one five two zero plus four two sixty twenty one three seventy to minus from that two one nine five. So we get one nine one seven five. Perfect. Out of the number of graduates in two thousand three shortlisted, what percentage got offered a job? So two thousand three shortlisted six four sixty. So it's six twenty divided by six four sixty is nine point five nine percent. What is the percentage of graduates that applied in two thousand three who were selected for a job? Um, again, that's the total, so seven, no, it's 620 divided by 7520. Um, that's 8.24. Now, now, what I want to say is, as you can see with my calculations, I'm not actually working out the actual percentage, I'm just working out the decimal equivalent. So 0 0.08244 is obviously 8.24% if I multiply it by 100. But in the exam, to save time, it's much better for me to simply um, skip that step of multiplying by 100, and just by looking at it, know that it's 8.24%. So yeah, it could work. Let's mark this and see how it goes. Oh, one incorrect, right. Did I misread the question? Um, okay, it's a rounding error. Ah, fair enough. Oh, must have just rounded it incorrectly. My bad. Well, we've still got four correct. That's not too bad. Um, let's do another one. Right, table below, demographic third respondents. Number of respondents in that group. Maximum minimum age of respondents, again in brackets, five female respondents. Okay, great. Okay. What is the percentage of male respondents who have three children? Right, so males, one, two, uh, 12, so total, so it's 2 divided by 12, is 16.7%. Quite easy. Given the information, um, the people under 35 and older can be at most, which percentage of the total respondents? Okay, so 35 and older. So we're therefore looking for because it's given the age range, we can assume that the least, like only one person is the lowest age, and we can sort of maximize it. So we can say one male, seven here, so eight so far from males, 35 and older possibly, female, four here, um, 12, 15, 16. So out of the 30 in total, we could say 16 out of 30, which is 53%. That's not an answer. Um, right, let's do it again. So the people 35 and older can be at most which percentage of the total respondents? So that's one here, seven here, that's eight. And then we have another 16. Oh, wait, no, it's a total, 24. My bad, didn't add them together. So it's 24 divided by 30. 80% of that good work. Sorry, I didn't add these numbers together. What is the percentage that could fall into the 35 to 40 year group? Um, the smallest number. So that's got to be one. Two. Yeah, we're looking at the upper and low bounds. This one's got to be in the between 35 and 40. There has to be one person, no, not from there, from here, or eight people from here. So one plus eight is nine, and one person from here definitely ten, and one from here eleven. So eleven out of thirty. That's thirty-seven percent. For males, what is a modal average of the number of children they have? Modal is the most common, therefore it has to be two, because most eight out of twelve males have two kids. What is the percentage of people with two or more children? So two or more is two and three. So eight plus two is 10 plus three and two is 15. So 15 divided by 30 in total is 50%.
the questions are rather reasonable, I'd say. They're not too difficult, just require some quick thinking and some reasonably good mental math. Yes, we've got them all correct. Good work. So, as you can see, some of the questions did take longer than others, but then others took 10 seconds, which means that we averaged out in terms of time, which is good for us. And so there's no need to worry about that too much. Let's do another, um, another set of questions. Okay, right. Below is a list of cocktail shots made by a hotel for a Christmas party. Volume of alcohol in the milliliters. I have a content to listen to the percentage. Great. Okay, so which cocktail contains the highest concentration of alcohol. So concentration of alcohol will be um, sort of like out of the total volume, how much does it contain as a proportion? So actually, um, we're just looking, skimming through. So the silver bullet has got both a super strong gin and a weak liqueur. The tequila has got three you know, 375 of the tequila. So just skimming over things, it looks like the tequila. And I'm not gonna spend too long. Um, tequila Sunrise seems to be the strongest. I'm not gonna spend too long working this one out. What percentage of cocktails contain citrus? So citrus is in one, in two, in three cocktails. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we need to do three divided by eight, which gives us 3.7. 0.375, which means 37.5% of the cocktails. A bottle of vodka contains 750 milliliters. How many bottles of vodka must be purchased to make 40 freak shots? So a freak shot contains 50 milliliters of vodka. So for 40 freak shots, 40 times 50 milliliters is 2,000 milliliters. One bottle contains 750. So to actually make those, you know, 40, I need three bottles because two bottles will only be. 1.5 litres in total, therefore I need another bottle, which is three bottles. Um, the receipt at the end of the party states the following purchases were made. Okay, all of these. How much rum was used for the party? Great, so, rum. Um, B52 uses no rum. Blue Mondays uses... Um, Blue Kamikaze, I think that's the name of that. Also uses no rum. A silver bullet uses no rum, and 14 tequila shots uses no rum, so zero. Fair enough, because the voodoo is the only one that contains the rum, actually. So um, let's see how that, um, that fares. I think that also should be a fairly good set with nothing wrong. Oh, actually, I made a mistake. How did we make a mistake there? Can't tell. Okay. The receipt at the end of the party states the following purchases were made. Oh, fair enough. Okay, so I, I just assumed that when they said Blue Mondays and the Silver, uh, whatever, the Tequila Rocks, I thought um, they were like just mistakes, spelling mistakes, but it turns out they're different cocktails. And because of different cocktails, you don't know what's in them, therefore, they may have used rum, therefore the answers can't tell, not zero. <sighs> That's just me being assumptuous here. So again, what that proves is that don't assume things. If something is written differently in the question, that's for a reason. Don't just assume it's a mistake they've made, because I've probably proved to check the question. So that was silly of me. Right, let's do one more, then I think we'll call it a day. A florist has drawn up a new price sign for the flower shop. It can be seen below. Okay, 35, three dozen roses, okay. So what I'm doing here, just to explain, is I'm quickly skimming over these questions, not looking for the actual numbers, just looking where the numbers are. So I know there's a table here with the different prices, with the different quantities. I know there's also a special deal, the lover's bouquet special. So by just skimming the overall different areas of the data, when I read the question, I then know where in the data to look. You don't have to understand each row of data before you read the question. Once you read the question, you can very easily know where to look within the question. So expressing as a percentage of the price of a lover's bouquet special, what is the price of the same amount of roses bought using the cheapest prices in the main table? So in the main table, um, we need three dozen roses. That's 36 roses. So um, roses, two times a dozen. So two dozens is 20 pounds, plus one dozen is 30 and 20, which is 33 pound 20. Um, it's 35 pounds for the special deal with the card, but the total here is 32, 30, but the total here is 33 pound 20. 
because we need 33.2 divided by 35, which is 94.86%, because I round it. Um, great. A man enters and buys a dozen roses, a dozen tulips, and four orchids. What is the total for the purchase if the flowers are bought in the cheapest way possible? Right. A dozen roses is 13.20. A dozen tulips is £12.70. And four orchids is £6.80. We're doing some quick mental math. 2, 1, um, 5, 2, 1. That should be £33.20. I made a silly mistake, I think. That's going to be four orchids is £6.80. Tulips is £12.70. Ah, yes, I misread the price for that. Okay, my bad. That's seven. Just 32 pounds 70. Technically, although I got 32 pounds 20, I could have just selected the closest one. Let's say I was short to found, I could have done that probably, but um, I just wanted to calculate it again to be sure it's a relaxed video anyway. What is, a pri what is the difference in price between two dozen orchids bought together at the two dozen price and two dozen orchids bought at the individual price? So two dozen of orchids bought together is £23, and then a dozen contains 12, therefore two dozen contains 24. So we'll do 24 times 1.85. I know that's wrong because I made a typo there. So let's do 1.85 times 24. That's £44.40. And £23 for two dozen. So the difference will be £21.40. So buying two dozen is a lot cheaper. What is the difference between... The price per rose of a dozen, 12 roses, and the price per lily, um, oh, a dozen lilies bought a dozen prices. Okay, right, so diff price difference per rose. Um, we need to do £13.20 for the roses divided by 12, which is £1.10. And then a lily, uh, a dozen of lilies cost £11. So we do 11 divided by 12, that's £91.67 minus 90. 1.67 18.33 so as always thanks so much for watching if this video was useful then please do comment down below please give it a like use the medify platform to go and revise it's very useful they've got loads of questions as always thanks so much for watching and i'll see you guys soon in the next video Bye bye